Hello everyone again, it's Mark here. I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network and this is the best bit of the job. As I often say, it's where I get to spend some time with one of our full members and introduce them to you. So Charlie, thank you so much for joining me today for this. Hi Mark, I'm very excited. Thank you for having me. It's going to be fun. Um, we've already had laughs and there'll be more. So for the benefit of those who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you before, as I have, would you like to say hi? Where are you? What are you doing? What's that behind you? Et cetera. OK, yeah. Um, hi, I'm Charlie Kirkham. I'm a Midlands based visual artist. Um, I'm located just outside Birmingham. Um, and behind me is one of my oil paintings. That one is a meter by a meter. Um, and they're all part of my George and the Dragon series, which is something I've been working on for the past couple of years, doing ink drawings and then working them up through laser cutting um, into oil paintings. Um, and that's what's been keeping me busy. Fantastic. We've had a quick look. So, for, so I'm going to share my screen so that you can talk us through um, some of these. So um, here we are. This one's my favourite the three princesses and the dragon. Um, this is the one that's behind you. Yeah. Um, and they're wonderful. So tell us a little bit more. I know there's a, often there's a stage before this, isn't there? There the is. So the stage before it is on the, you go to the home page and click on the dragon beyond St. George. Yeah, here um, we go. And this is at charliekirkham.com if anyone wants to. This is at charliekirkham.com. So this is the start, is it, of the process? Yeah, so as, as strange as it sounds, it's it's quite a long-winded process. Um, I've never been able to work particularly successfully in a modular way. So I work on very heavyweight cotton rag paper, starting with pencil, working my way through ink, building on tonal washes and some of the drawings. Um, and then I go back, do digital, more abstract versions, paint up the studies and then paint up the final pieces. So I have a very research focused and quite time consuming process to get to the end result, but that's what works for me. Um, so this, for example, is an ink drawing. I did it in a 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, so half a millimeter nib. Um, and it's, it's not particularly big, so about 40 centimeters. Um, I used dinner plates to create the circles. So it started off, I had the idea of, oh, I kind of like drawing something circular. I went to Coventry Cathedral, saw a beautiful circular version of George and the Dragon um, a few years ago. And this whole few years of obsession has been born from that. So um, most of them start off in circular format because I found just putting, putting a line around the circle on the paper suddenly meant I had a way into this blank sheet of paper that made it significantly less intimidating for me. Um, so this piece, um, a dragon devouring a princess next to a yew tree, is the princess is sort of semi-zombified. Um, and in the background, you can see another princess with a scythe who's already been turned into a skeleton, but has still got her tiara and her high heels on while she's holding that scythe. Um, and I wanted the dragon to be this combination of a comic figure and also quite a scary, monstrous figure. Because on the varying pieces, we take the perspective sometimes of St. George, sometimes of the princess and sometimes of the dragon. Um, but all of them are, are interrelated with each other. If you scroll down, actually, there's one that onto the, that row. So you see the one, the four rivers of Eden that has got those sort of dragony heads in it. Um, so this one is actually going over to New York for May. Mm. And it's part of the Passion for Freedom Festival. So I'm very excited. So that's going to be at Seven House Gallery in Brooklyn. Um, and this I used more wash on. So it went more into the gray scales. And it's based on um, a Kabbalistic mystical narrative of the creation that when, when man kind or humankind falls and uh, is expelled from Eden, the the four rivers that join Eden to the earth suddenly disappear and the heads of each river is placed on a different part of the earth. So the geographical location of Eden disappears forever. Um, and this was my interpretation of the river heads becoming heads of 
monstrous dragon creatures and drifting off to different parts of the earth. So <laughs> little niche. That's great. I love it when there's some thinking and, and a story behind it. But it, you clearly, you are the dragon lady, clearly, aren't you, really? <laughs> um yeah. that's that's the identifying characteristic i've picked up from you and they're, they're wonderful fantastic excellent thank you so much for showing us those so this is at charliekirkham.com if you, if anyone would like to go and call them but there'll be um versions of this and we'll create a gallery so that we've got that on the profile page that we do excellent charlie thank you so much for for um sharing those with us now um uh have a bit of fun now if that's okay yeah that's fine by me um there we go uh, now i'm going to create your fantasy quite appropriately your fantasy cultural year answers to a few questions my microphone seems to be changing all the time i keep seeing a note come up can you hear me okay i can hear you absolutely fine mark excellent okay i'll ignore that then Right. So this is fun. This is where the anecdotes come out, the, the, the laughs, more laughs and the um, surprises quite often. Um, now, I'm going to take you on a fantasy cultural year. And in order to place you somewhere in the world, I want to know if you have a favourite building. Oh. I think probably Casa de Familia, the Gaudi in Barcelona. Sagrada Familia. Yeah, that, that's the one, not the Casa, the Sagrada de Familia. Sagra yeah. I don't speak Spanish, so <laughs> <laughs> automatically embarrassing, but I think it's a fabulous building. And I literally spent two days of my life there, just like I went in and I just didn't want to leave. So I had to go back again the next day. Okay, so that's where we're going to place you. Okay. Uh, I need to flip my... Um, uh, so it, make sure it's working. There we go um it might be audio so um bear with me one second sorry uh, there we go let's hope that settles down can you still hear me okay yeah i can hear you fine right so i'd like you to imagine it's june it's 6 p.m you're in barcelona and you're sitting at a pavement cafe in sight of La Sagrada Familia. And on your right is a book. Okay. You're relaxing. Now, this book can be your favourite book. It can be a book that's been with you all your life. It can be a book that changed your life. It can be a book that made you angry or particularly happy. Or it can be a recent discovery. What book can I place on the table next to you? Oh, it would have to be Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. Nice. Love it. Do you, uh, what Who? What was the film? There's a film version, wasn't there? I have never watched the film because I love the book so much. I cannot face watching a film version. I know that sounds a bit strange, but I just, I don't want it ruined for me. Now that makes sense. I was the same with Lord of the Rings until they came out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, excellent. So you've got Anna Karenina there. Now there's a drink on your left. What's the drink? Oh, I think it would be a virgin mojito. A virgin mojito. I like a dirty mojito, which is with dark rum. Oh. Yeah. Um, excellent. Now you're feeling quite pleased with yourself because you've just come from a meeting inside the uh, La Sagrada Familia um with a wealthy barcelona based family who like to support research into the art world okay arts and culture in general and they've asked you if you'd be prepared to spend a year doing some research for them nothing too onerous no big reports to write just they want you to immerse yourself in the cultural landscape of any country now you're in spain at the moment but it doesn't have to be spain Okay, so, and it's all expenses paid, a nice fee, first class all the way, um, all your, anything at home is sorted out, everything's fine, you can take a loved one with you if you want, or they can come and visit during the day, during the year, all you need to do is to choose where you're going to go, which country would you like to spend a year in studying its culture? Oh my goodness, that's a really difficult question, isn't it? 
because you know I probably go for a year and then change my mind and have to go somewhere else and it, it could go on indefinitely um hmm. my initial reaction is to say Japan like okay I feel like that's a knee-jerk reaction from a lot of people and then I'm like oh but what about Switzerland what about New Zealand what about like places where the culture is less clear cut and you could maybe get involved in a few different cultures um or maybe like South Korea like that could be fun take your pick I'm gonna okay to <laughs> yeah, to I'm gonna go for Japan <laughs> Japan excellent yeah. okay now you're on um the plane okay and the you're looking forward to this because it's a, a nice fee all expenses paid they're going to put you up in a beautiful apartment in in would you like tokyo or kyoto or kobe where would you like to be based can i spend three months in each or do i have to be based in one you can do that yeah it's yeah, your I'll, year i'll do that i'm indecisive i'm gonna do it that way we're going to start you in tokyo then yeah brilliant i'll start up in tokyo and then... okay excellent um and you're on the plane and one of your personal steward, because you turned left when you got on the aeroplane, your personal steward hands you a note from the wealthy Spanish family saying they'd like to study you a little while they, you're studying Japan. The first thing they want to establish is the impact on you of limiting your musical listening, okay, to one very specific, specific genre or type of music. Um, and you can only listen to that type of music for the whole year they want to find out if that drives you crazy you can choose the genre though no i'd be okay with that i okay. might like choose the genre yeah which genre will you choose which I type think of music? Pop. i am like unashamedly a massive swifty um and i would go for pop because i feel like i could quite happily listen to that genre for 12 months okay that's fine. Yeah, it's, it gives you quite a broad spectrum mm -hmm. as well. Clever, cho clever choice. Okay. Um, now, you arrive in Tokyo at the airport and there's a group of lovely looking friendly people holding your name up on a card. And they usher you to a limo and they take you to your apartment, which is overlooking the most beautiful palace in Tokyo with the cherry blossom trees all around. Um, and they say, settle in, unpack, relax, and we're going to take you out to dinner. Um, and we're going to take you to a dance show as well. Now, you don't have to stick to Japanese culture. You can, because this is a fantasy magic year. So they go, they they, they've asked you to decide what dance performance you'd like to see. Now, you can have anyone, any dancer, any dance group, any dance style. So what would you like to sit and watch for a couple of hours? Mm, probably ballet okay nice modern or traditional i classical? think contemporary Class contemporary yeah. ballet okay so we might have a, a visiting trip by ballet rombe or somebody doing yeah. something wonderful great now you get to choose the cuisine for dinner what would you like to choose oh i'm going to go for a steak and chips so probably like standard American. <laughs> okay. Steak and chips it is. Fantastic. Fries or chips? Oh, chips. Big, chunky, British style chips. Double Maybe fry. Maybe like a grilled tomato on the side, you know, like coffee. Excellent. Do you know about that thing that chefs use to test how well done a, a steak is? No. Apparently, I, my, my um, brother-in-law taught me this. He's a chef. He learned it in the in the navy. If you put your hand like that mm -hmm. and press here, that's yeah. that's pretty much raw. Okay. If you move your thumb to the gap between your first and second fingers and push again, that's rare. If you go again, that's medium. And if you go all the way over there, that's well done. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So you don't have to cut it open. <laughs> excellent you see anecdotes i'm sorry oh brilliant like next time i i have a steak i'm gonna test it <laughs> yeah i'll probably really offend the chef I won't do that. maybe when i do one at home yeah okay now the next day is um uh sport day 
Mm -hmm. okay? Now, many of us consider some sports to be a performance art, um, rhythmic gymnastics being a very good example. Um, you can spend the afternoon watching any sport you like. Are you a sporty person? No, not at all. I mean, I quite enjoy watching sport, but I am not a sporty person by any stretch. Okay, so what would you like to watch? I would like to watch synchronised swimming. <laughs> that's that's up there. Synchronised swimming and gymnastics, they're, they're, I find those really fun to watch because they're basically like dancing. I know, but they, they do these strange walk-ons, don't they? Mm. Like they're doing all them, they're sort of, it's 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 hilarious <laughs> um but i i like to watch as well i like that synchronized swimming that's a good one yeah okay do you want to try or do you want to just watch i think if i try i'm gonna get kicked off the team pretty quickly so i'm gonna stick to watching <laughs> okay now the next day is more your neck of the woods it's visual art day okay in your induction here now in tokyo and we might have moved to kyoto by this time doesn't matter okay um but they have this wonderful art gallery which is digital so they use projection they use screens they use act real art as well but they also have this um immersive vr experience which allows people to step into a painting okay and look around so you get to see what's behind the body of the caravaggio for example um but you can only choose one visual artist. Whose work would you like to step into and immerse yourself in? Oh, I'm gonna go for Holman Hunt. Holman Hunt. Yeah. New to me, so I'm going to Google. Oh, it's, it, I'm from Birmingham, so um, William Holman Hunt, <laughs> pre raphaelite oh. like I'm very uncool, but I think his work is just like the hyper realism of it is sort of mind blowing. Okay, I'm going to show everyone. Um, uh, like the scapegoat is a good one for like the the very bizarre, hyper realistic. Okay, give us a tour. Which would you like to see? Um, you know what? I think I would probably. Oh, should I step into? Which would you like to step into? I think I would go into the scapegoat if that one's an option. Um, Which one? Or maybe I'd go into the hireling shepherd. Hmm. Like, yeah, let's go into the shepherd. I feel like that's going to be an easier one to get into. Am I on it? Where is it? No, go go down and then go over. Um, over, over. Here we go. Right, you can step into that, walk around. Excellent. Love it. I'm not particularly familiar. So, he's Birmingham, is he? Was he? Yeah. So he was. He was a Birmingham-based artist. Um, and the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery, which is where my grandparents used to take me all the time as a child, um, had a lot of his pieces. And I just used to sort of stand in front of them, like totally transfixed because the colours were almost like more real than a photo. Mm. Sort of, it literally like looking at another world. So, wow, excellent. Okay, so you get to see all of his work in this environment and you can step into that one. Excellent. Um, now, to lighten the mood the next day, they, they'd they like, your friends would like to take you to a play or a musical or an opera. And again, it can be, you can only have one of those things, but it can be any play, musical or opera with the original cast, if you wish. What would you like to see? I would go and see the importance of being earnest. <laughs> like, right. just because I find that hilarious. Nice bit of Oscar. Excellent. Yeah, I love a bit of Oscar. Big, big fan. Brilliant. Excellent. Um, now, movie night is approaching. Now, your Japanese friends have said, please choose a movie. We'll all come with you that you love, that you may, you that perhaps we haven't seen. What would you surprise them with? Oh, I don't think my movie choices have ever surprised anyone because I'm normally very, very late to the party with films. Um, but one that they would probably have seen, but I would quite happily watch again would would be the the Moulin Rouge like the Baz Luhrmann film. Love it. Just because it's it. like it's so much fun. Um, I, I mean, don't think there's anyone on the planet who hasn't seen that movie at this point though. Um, I know, but, uh, and who knew that um, 
um thingy mcgregor and uh, ewan mcgregor and um what's her name nicole Gimmon. yeah who knew they could sing i know it that was duet, like... that duet wow. they do, <laughs> it's such a clever format because that that song about love um leaps across different artists it's so clever that, really clever apparently have you seen the show i um, haven't no my brother and sister-in-law saw it they said unbelievably good um the show the in the west end um excellent yep okay so you can have moulin rouge which is lovely now tomorrow is hero day and you're in japan uh, where there are plenty of Michelin star restaurants of all sorts of cuisines. So we've booked one for you for a leisurely two hour lunch. And you can invite three other people. And they can be anyone you like. Oh, wow. OK. With us or not. OK. Um, the first person I'm going to invite is Dorothea Tanning. Um, Tell yeah. us about her. Um, just... Because, I mean, she was still painting when she was over 100 years old. And her work, one, is is totally amazing. And two, she just kind of, like, st stayed so true to her vision of the world and this, like, work ethic throughout her life, even when she was going in and out of fashion. Um, and I just, like, when I, I saw her work in the, in the Tate and I looked at this painting and I felt like this this like communion with the painting almost like you're having a conversation with the artist through their painting and I just I love that um so I would invite her and having a quick look at her here which one would... like her, her later work this is sort of the the early surrealist stuff and then sort of the the stuff that came later where it's a little bit more I mean this is fabulous as well but the stuff mm. where she's gone more into like the the neutrals and slightly more abstracted and she's kind of really found her space in painting. Mm. Um, right. So sorry. that's Dorothea Tanning, if anyone wants to have a look. Excellent. Okay. Who else is with you at lunch? I'm going to have Vincent van Gogh with me as well. Like, okay. just because, you know what? I just feel like he would be a great character to have have lunch with, to talk to, to just hear his take on the world. <laughs> he would be livid, wouldn't he? Yeah, I feel like he'd just be really angry, probably walk out like partway through, like not want to be hanging around with other painters because we cramp his style. I think it could be really fun. It'd be like a wedding, but in lunch. I format. know, but I think I'm right in that he died um, in poverty. Yeah, he did. I mean, his whole life he was subsidised by his brother. Um, and there's, there's just like that beautiful book of letters to him from his brother. And, and then, of course, he became this big, big success sort of. After, after he after his death yeah so he never got that recognition of his talent he sort of would spend his life questioning his worth and his talent and now he's one of the greats and I think I think there's some sort of pathos in in that and it's hard not to feel very emotional about him just on a personal level before you even get into how amazing the work is um and so yeah, yeah I think he'd be great he would be great he would be livid his first you know, when he realised what had happened to his work since he died, he, his first sentence has got to be, you've got to be kidding, right? Yeah, you exactly. Know? <laughs> and how would he even feel about it? And I mean, and how would his work have changed had he had that level of success in his lifetime? Like, would he have been creating completely different work? It's yeah. Interesting. There's a lovely, there's a great video on YouTube. Um, it's a spoof. It's a, a kind, you may have seen it, but it's around what would happen if clients got involved with those artists and um it's with vincent van gogh and uh frida carlo and <laughs> I saw that one. that's hilarious it is isn't it and i think frida, it finishes, you, you know if... and put a cat in yeah yes. <laughs> if you do that i will cut my ear off <laughs> anyway okay one more then oh my third person okay i um I'm thinking probably like Martin Luther King. I think it would be a very strange lunch experience. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just like when you think about people who you're like, they're really inspiring. I would love to have a conversation with them. I would love to know more what their take on the world was and where all of their passion came from. Um, I feel like we need more people in the mix, though. Otherwise, you'd get very bored having lunch with a bunch of artists. But... That's a nice mix. I like the idea of that. 
but then he'd keep us all level you know like we'd be all like kept grounded and yeah lovely so there you are you're on your way home now um having completed your fantasy cultural year you've been to tokyo kyoto um and uh kobe as well perhaps and you've been up mount fuji on a helicopter done all of the things that you'd like to do, you would want to do you're on your way home now i'm afraid after this wonderful year and the ban uh, the 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 limit of listening only to pop music has been lifted um so what outside pop would be the first piece of music you'd like to listen to oh i think i would probably listen to um is it is it chopin who did the dying swan like the piano piece the, um, the swan like the swan the swan the um sanson camille sanson yeah yeah yeah, like that nice, like the, with the rhythm in it and everything. I feel like that would be the perfect antidote, and antidote to a year of pop music would be like that kind of like chill swan song thing. Perfect. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's your fantasy cultural year. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to do a few this or that's with you, if that's okay, just to finish off. Um, I'm going to give you two options. You can only you have to choose one. Okay, it's quite fast paced. Are you ready? Oh, fast paced. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready, Mark. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Coffee. Radio or television? Radio. High heels or trainers? High heels. Car or motorcycle? Car. Comedy or, or horror? Comedy. Concert hall or sports stadium? Concert hall. Cat or dog? Cat. Test the water or dive in at the deep end? Dive in at the deep end. Yes, <laughs> that's something we have in common. <laughs> Orange juice, bits or no bits? No bits. An hour in a library or an hour in a museum? Oh, an hour in a museum. Beethoven or Mozart? Mozart. Shower or bath? Shower. Cooking or being cooked for? Who's doing the cooking? Um, Probably mm. cooking. Yeah, more sure of the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> Fiction or non-fiction? Mm, fiction patterned or plain patterned sand or snow sand shopping online or in store in store reggae or salsa reggae indoors or outdoors outdoors android or iphone iphone start immediately or wait until the last minute wait until the last minute <laughs> You and I are very are so alike. <laughs> um, science or history? History. New York or Los Angeles? New York. Early morning or early hours? Early morning. Red or white wine? Oh, red wine. Numbers or words? Words. Mild or spicy? Spicy. And finally, see the future or change the past? Change the past. Excellent. That was great. I th then you had absolutely no idea what was coming. Charlie, you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much. <laughs> we got the anecdotes in, we got the laughs and we got the surprises, which is great. So excellent. So wherever this appears, there'll be lots about you, um, examples of your work and um, other videos and images. And um, this has been absolutely great fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Very much. So. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Mark. Thank you so much, Charlie. And thank you for being one of our full members. It keeps us going. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.